Hello ladies and gentlemen, Willie here. I think it's about time I did a shameless plug for the channel. You ever have that one channel that's always recommended and you watch their stuff but you forget to subscribe to them? Yeah, I totally never do that. So anyway, if you'd like to subscribe, that'd help me out tremendously. Anyway, on with video. Pay to win, those three words that will drive people away from a game before even considering giving it a go. It breaks down player involvement, gives direct routes to tangible in-game rewards, and cuts out the need for player progression, all in the name of real life money. And that's the bit that largely is taken an issue with. Action in game should equal reward in game. Success in real life, translating to success in game, has always been a bitter subject to look into. And we've seen this be the case with other games going into a pay to win model where players have just evaporated overnight. See RuneScape evolving into RuneScape 3 losing a big chunk of players as the majority didn't like the direction that the game was going in and the developer decided then to put pay to win into the game through a gambling system no less. There was even a player who did a YouTube series about getting to the highest stats possible through only spending real life money. Thing is, though this is pay to win, it's all through systems that the game allows that the developers have specifically put in. A lot of people will just drop money on something as they would on hobbies to get an item they want, another level, or some cool looking armor. And mobile gaming isn't any small thing either, a marketplace totally powered by pay to win and cash shops. WoW's model of a box fee, at least for retail, as well as a subscription is a total dinosaur of a system. These days you can only get away with one, or if any of them, at all. And for most games now, that's the box, or digital download, I guess I should say. Look at all the huge games now, they're all free with cash shops, League of Legends, Fortnite, other MOBAs or Battlegrounds. Get people through the door, get them hooked, and they're likely to spend on some stuff they think looks cool or they see their favourite streamer using, or whatever it may be. I know I had an undead warrior after watching Kalinda back in the day. This kind of stuff rubs off on you. Even looking at retail, character boosts have been a thing for a long time now, and since Warlords of Draenor, you've gotten a free one when you buy the expansion. And in Mists of Pandaria, it was introduced as a formal feature, as well as other mounts and pets in World of Warcraft's first look into having a cash shop. So what about Classic then? There is no pay to win, right? Inherently, no, but players have found ways to make the game into pay to win. However, it's important to know there is no official means to spend your real life money to receive gold within Classic, and that for an in-game economy, there's nothing wrong with paying gold in exchange for services. It happens all the time, right? Enchants, portals, and so on, of course. And based on that, purely using in-game currency for a service cannot be pay to win, as every player has an equal opportunity within the game to work towards these goals that can be exchanged for gold, like a Lionheart Helm, an epic mount, or maybe new enchants, or some pieces of gear for your twink. The thing is though, it seems like a pretty huge number of players are just straight up buying gold from illegal sources to fund themselves in game, and it's having a straight up terrible effect on the game. I'm sure you've heard many a time how much more important gold is in Classic than well, in any other version of World of Warcraft that there's ever been, it's not that easily obtained, and there is a tremendous amount of things that's needed for. New skill ranks, mounts, professions, enchants, some gear upgrades, consumables for raid or PvP, the list really does go on and on. On retail, I've accumulated hundreds of thousands of gold built up over the years, and for a raid night, I don't even need that much of it overall, but that is over a long period of time. I've covered botting quite at length on this channel as I want to expose, I guess, where new farms are cropping up and try and offer a bit of insight for the layman into what they're doing and potentially why, and it is interesting for me to look into as well. We've very much seen an ebb and flow with bots, the ban waves months ago, the recent changes with the rich Thorium veins and dire more least, but they keep coming back in pretty huge numbers too. And simply put, they wouldn't be so popular if people weren't buying gold that they farm en masse. I think it's pretty clear at this point that a lot of players don't want to farm anymore, but they want to make sure they have an easy access path to the best items, boosts or consumables. And it doesn't look like people fear getting hit with a ban either. Here's pretty much every negative effect buying gold has on the game. A game where gold actually matters by the way, so let me give you an example of how it goes. So you have a player farming for gold for consumables for PvE or PvP because they want to perform as well as they can for the content, even if the content's easy, that's not so unusual. So off they set to do some herbalism or maybe some mining on an alt. One hour around the eastern plague lands later, they found a few rich thorium veins, no luck with the arcanes though, a couple dream foil, only one plague bloom to be seen. 
or somewhere around this mark, which is quite frustrating. The amount they've made isn't even going to cover a mongoose and some free action potions, which is quite disheartening. So over to the auction house they go on their alt and check the prices. They see stacks and stacks of Plague Bloom posted by Big Farmer X, a druid that you noticed whilst in Eastern Plaguelands, and each one is over 3 gold too. But you barely found one node out in the open world. It seems like this guy's constantly online as well. I guess it's just a big server, you think to yourself, and you can only play in the evening when it's especially busy, you know, what with having a job and all that. So you look at some of the gold making guides online, there must be better ways. Jump runs might be a bit better now, arcanes are going back up since those dire more lease changes, but you would have to split the loot two ways with your gear level, which makes it not too great. There's a few other things you notice as well, but most of them look like they're barely going to be 60 to 80 gold per hour. More or less every single guide out there says play a mage, boost with a mage, gold farm with a mage, 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 mage. But you don't have a mage, you have a warrior and a druid, just like you did back in vanilla. Besides, there are always people constantly spamming selling boosts for Scarlet Monastery, Mara and ZG, and they are also always online as well. You do see a GDKP run for the week though, and your warrior is pretty geared at this point, and you need gold badly now, so you tag along having seen some posts on Reddit of people dropping silly amounts of gold for items, and surely enough you get into a group full of whales where a mage pays 10k for Mind Quickening Gem, some ungilded warrior magically has 50k for a Drake Fang Talisman, and a rogue pays 20k for Maladath. By the end of the run you're close to the top of the DPS on the charts, and you are suddenly thousands of gold richer. Now you just have to go and explain to your GM why you are locked to BWL, but whatever you think of it. I do this a few times a month and I'll be set for gold till TBC. But you do wonder in the back of your mind, how on earth are these people managed to have farmed such a massive amount of gold? And moreover, why are they willing to part with sums of gold this large for items which are sure very good, but for that many hours of farming, it doesn't really seem worth it. Imagine dropping 50,000 gold on an item. Let's say that player had a mage ult that boosted ZG and they made 250 gold per hour on average. That's 200 hours of boosting, 20 days for 10 hours a day. That's more than a full-time job for two thirds of a month for a Drake Fang Talisman. That seems pretty excessive, especially when you consider that players spent around 40 to 50K to buy Scarab Lord. It's almost like players spending this much on items have no actual concept of how long gold takes to farm because they are getting it from somewhere else. Hmm. And then at the end of the run, that ungilded warrior's 50k worth of gold is split out between dozens of players. Here's how it goes. Seller, buyer, GDKP, gold split, consumables and other buyable services, back to seller. It's a pretty neat circle, isn't it? Even then, a fair portion of this is going to purely legitimate players too, stuff like enchants and portals and so on, but these are all really minor expenses. GDKP isn't minor at all. GDKP has created an environment where the guy with the biggest wallet is the winner and fosters a culture of paying to win. Not only this, but it drags down normal players who cannot find a legitimate alternative to farm gold from regular means as their go-to farms are botted down to just not being worth their time anymore. So indirectly, gold buyers are getting regular people involved in their decision, who will then go on to buy overpriced items from the auction house by nature of inflation caused by gold buying, giving back to the sellers who then resale the gold. Are you seeing the bigger picture now? And what does our poor warrior friend have to do here? Can't find a GDKP and running low on gold again? Does he want to smash another two hour BWL for 500 to 1000 gold? or go back to his 60 gold per hour average. Or maybe he'll think, fine, I can't beat them, I'll join them. Nobody seems to be getting banned anyway. Maybe he'll use some of that GDKP gold or bought gold to boost his own mage up so he can start boosting other players. That seems to be the play if he ever wanted to go fully legitimate on his gold income situation at the moment. After all, a real game is an end game, right? Where you go AFK watching Netflix on your ult while a mage boosts you to level cap, only to play your gear characters and get locked into GDKP runs instead of actually raiding with your guild anymore, swapping to a PvP spec, stacking up on consumes to join your pre-made, crushing pugs, hitting your runner cap for the week and then logging out to go do something else before it's time to do it all again next week. You start to care so little about gold, maybe you'll just be a buyer in next week's GDKP instead. You've seen a few DFTs go for 15k now, that's dirt cheap, right? That's barely a few hours of overtime this Friday. You even heard that warrior who paid 50k has gone on to pay 70k for an ancient Karaji Ripper, so clearly there are no bans for this kind of thing. And that's how it goes, normal player, can't compete, drawn towards taking gold that's almost certainly been bought, rationalises buying it, becomes a buyer. 
or they will just think that's not something I'm willing to do and quitting. Farming bots are one thing, buyers are another. Neither can exist without the other. I don't think many players actually expect repercussions from buying at the moment, and I've heard the counter argument, I could just buy you gold, have it mailed to you, and you would get banned if Blizzard came down hard on buyers instead of sellers. I mean, look, the gold still has to come from some kind of trader account. It can't just be that simple. If it were looked into, I bet you could suss it out fairly easily. That's likely the issue, though, the looking into a bit. In any event, Classic, over time, has become pretty pay-to-win, to be honest. Sure, it's all in-game gold being moved about, but I just think quite a sizable portion is not from regular player farming anymore, but gold that's being bought and moved about instead. And it's this kind of activity that also brings the WoW token to mind as well, though at this point, I'm not sure if it would even stop people buying from cheaper alternatives instead of just inflating the value of gold even more, which isn't a great situation to be in. And with the requirement for consumables and gold in general about to fall off a cliff after a few weeks or maybe even a month or so of Nax Ramus, I think these items the bots are flooding the market with are going to hit a real wall sooner rather than later, which I'll cover in a bit more detail soon. Anyways, have you seen any crazy GDKP bids? Have you had any experiences like the one I went over here? It seems to be more common than you'd think. Hit me up below and I will see you all in the next one very soon. If you like what you see, do give the video a like and subscribe as there will be plenty more to come. Thank you guys all so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.